so we got a kitten today. Oh. So so that that that's happened. Just imagine the memories we'll have of laughing at and not know what to do with a kitten. Kind of knows what to do with a kitten. I kind of I get the feeling that is the sort of kid who looks like he uh, knows what to do with things even when he doesn't. That's possible. The names of your children are now on the recording. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Can you edit them so it sounds like I just want you to say it like, you know, their cuss words. Yeah, my child. Be. Uh, should I use words? I'll use words. No. No? Don't use words? Fuck words. Yeah. Hey, Internet! Welcome back. This is Highway 47 Productions here. Uh, we're still doing Star Trek The Next Generation commentaries. We made it through the first three episodes, which is a feat in itself. And we're back tonight with episode four, The Last Outpost. I am Shaggy B, Shag's Bizzle in the Hizzle. You know. Uh. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> with me tonight, as always, is Draco Funk. Say something, Draco. Yeah, I'm just still... That, that was terrible, man. It was bad. It was real bad. I, I will not promise never to do it again, but I promise not to do it in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. And also with us coming back for some reason is Scrodrick. Say something, Scrod. Hey, hey, might drop out because it's, you know, my internet, not that joke at the beginning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what we'll tell ourselves. Now, you know, we're, we're doing this at a distance and we're cheap and none of us have reliable computers or internet or anything. But we're still ISP is awful. Yay. I'll probably bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. That's funny. I'll cover with <laughs> my specific ISP is awful. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know what I'll do. But uh, um, screw it. I'll leave it in. All right. So uh, we're here with uh, the last outpost. And as always, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. You all like it if I touch your ears? I mean, you know, it's not bad. I could always go for some Umox. You know, I'm not a fan, if I'm honest with you. Really? Yeah, you know, different strokes for different folks, but, you know, it just I just flinch. I'm like a cat. Speaking of cats, we, j we got a new kitten today. Oh, what'd you name it? Uh, well, I didn't name it, but my, my four-year-old named it Rosie. Rosie? Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I have expected to come clawing up my leg for the first time right in the middle of the video. Make sure your mic is on so we can all experience it together. It'll be great. And I assume like any like like a good Ferengi woman, uh, your your cat isn't wearing any clothes. I mean, no. I also assumed there that your cat was female. Sorry for assuming your cat's gender. It's OK. I once did that. And that's why I had a boy cat name that had a girl cat name. Yeah. If enough people tell you that your cat is a girl, you know, I just ne I just took their word for it. I never looked. And I had I had him for like three weeks before it became obvious. Well, before somebody, you know, picked picked him up and like turned him over and said, hey, your girl cat is a boy cat. And. You know, pointed it out to me. And yeah, there were there were some there were some obvious indicators that I missed. There tend to be. And why is it humping my leg? Um, I mean, he didn't really do that. We had a cat that would uh that w that was very good friends with one of the couch cushions. <laughs> can we can we start now? <laughs> yes, let's start now. All right. So this is <laughs> episode four <laughs> of Star Trek: The Next Generation, the last outpost. This is where they introduce the Ferengi that they've been. Um, speaking about and trying to build up the suspense for, and boy, everybody was, you know, getting ready for this new Star Trek adversary that was going to rival the Romulans and the Klingons and the Gorn. And they were they were so intimidating, you know, they're they're terrifying, they're barbaric, they uh, they're 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 animals, they're warriors, they're mortal enemies, hostile, hostile. We get to aggressive. meet them, aggressive, cannibalistic. Um, you know, they. They they hang the toilet paper roll underhand. Oh, that's low. Oh, those barbarians. Yeah, you know, just everything possible. I mean, they really did build up the suspense for him. It was actually, you know, a great, like, you know, campaign. Let's see how, 
how menacing they are. Well, and you know, we haven't we haven't seen the Romulans yet. We haven't seen uh we don't see the Gorn again until Enterprise, right? They they mention them in Deep Space Nine, but right. No, we don't actually see them until then. But we, we won't we won't see the Tholians, we won't see uh you know any of these people. So, you know, we, we needed a villain and, and tonight we we're sure gonna get it. So Draco, you want to tell our people about what they need to do to make sure that they're uh, with us on this track? Uh, we are watching the Netflix version of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1, Episode 4, The Last Outpost. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a, what, five-second countdown. So hover your mouse over the play button, and when we get to, what, zero, it's five, four, three, two, one, go. Yes, something like that. Yeah. Zero is usually the number after one when you're going backwards, but I like to throw in my own creative ideas sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And um and and something else that I forgot. I'm not I'm not with it tonight. This is either going to be a great episode or a really terrible one. I don't know which. Both. Both, probably both. Let's do this. Let's do this and let's let's all enjoy this together. Put us on in the background while you watch. And, you know, we'll be right there in your living room, you know, like as, as if you had friends. We'll be those fake friends that you don't have that you can watch Star Trek with. Yeah. Or we can pretend that you're our friends. Or you are our friends. Whatever works for you. <laughs> Maybe you're our mothers because those are the only people that will listen to these. We don't really know. But regardless, let's enjoy some Star Trek together. So, uh, mouses over play buttons and... When I get to the end of the count countdown, we will start our episode. All right. Season one, episode four, The Last Outpost in five, four, three, two, one. Off we go. That's a lot faster than warp seven. Ah, stuff's going down right away. Mm hmm. Man, the carpet does not line up with the bottom of the view screen there. So the carpet doesn't match the drapes. No, the carpet doesn't match the view screen. I have no idea what that means. I mean, I bet Rikers does. <laughs> <laughs> His carpet is bright blue. Ah, that solar system. Yes, tell us about the solar system you see, Jordy. We all see it too, I promise. That's so confusing. It, like, you can slow down? What? Oh, <laughs> they each got a line. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we're in range. Oh, God. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hmm, maybe we should do something about this. Give an order, please. Yeah, with deadly force. It's okay. As long as nothing's exploding on the bridge, we're fine. That is a really detailed ship model. That little section is supposed to be another ship. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Don't anticipate. Phasers and photon torpedoes armed, sir.
It shouldn't be. Is that a contraction? Ah, crap. That's one. Hey, it's Worf. Yeah, I remember him. He's been on every episode so far. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Troy's pooping back there. <laughs> we need to get her a squatty potty. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bathroom around the corner, girl. Like, really. Uh, do not skip the intro because we're not going to. That's the other thing that we were supposed to say. Yeah. Good job. I know that skip intro button is very tempting. It is, except it's also like all the way up on the screen and you don't need to lift a finger, man. We're here for you. Yeah. So the design of the Ferngi ship, the writer had a model of a horseshoe crab on his desk. <laughs> and I guess he looked down and said, hey, that'd be a cool ship design. It works. Although, you know, never mind. That'd be a spoiler. I don't want to give out spoilers. Yeah. So for the two of you with a sharper ear than I, when do they actually fix that wrong note? Somewhere around season four, maybe <laughs> five. Yeah, it, it lasts a while. And like, if memory serves, sometimes they use that recording in the end credits. If like the credits are slightly different length, like all the way through. Nice. Yeah. Isn't there one episode where the credits are really, really short? I think so, yeah. And instead of like using a different recording, they just sped it up a lot. Maybe I'm just you, imagining that. You you might be thinking of just when they air it these days and they put the credits like in a little picture in picture in the corner and whip through them real fast. That, that could be. Hey, Armin Shimmerman. Oh yeah. He, you know he'd make a really good Ferengi. You know, this happens a lot in Star Trek where they have the first actor to play that species return in a ma as a major role in that species. Is it, is it Jeffrey Hunter, the name of the guy who played three different aliens in Deep Space Nine and one more in Enterprise? Or Jeffrey something? Jeffrey Combs? Combs, right. Thank you. The guy who played Goldicott was the first Cardassian. Yep. What was it? Gomaset? Yes. So Jordy has to go down to engineering because the last chief engineer got fired. <laughs> yeah, they got fired by, you know, getting shoved into the warp core. <laughs> no, they let like a teenager take over the entire ship. Nah, that never happened, man. Riker's a pirate. I thought he was from Alaska. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> America exists in the future. Actually, that was a joke that the writers made because the original um, depiction of the Ferengi, like the sketch artist, actually, they said it looks like Uncle Sam. Oh, God. Oh. Data doesn't feel emotions, by the way.
nationalism yeah. that exists in the future. Yeah, if only we could solve that problem. Vastly. And this is this is okay. Remember what I said during the pilot episode that it seems like all of the actors for Next Generation or all the characters were born yesterday in the first season? Yeah. It's taken them ten minutes to be like, you know, they could have bigger guns than we do. Hey, it's the pool table. Oh yeah. This is the first time. It is. Oh, this is one of my favorite lines from Jordy coming up. Okay, good. Hey, it's that one guy. It's a Triforce on the warp core. I'll be damned. This is it. Oh, yeah, this. 0.300 milliseconds. <laughs> <sighs> he didn't have to take calculus. Yeah, cal calculates. He didn't have to take calculus until he got his yellow uniform. You like that massage? <laughs> no touching. No touching. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the ears, man. Ah, oh, they haven't learned that from the, you know, spajoos yet. Yeah. Sp <laughs> the what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Ferengi eventually kind of have some Jewish stereotypes there, so they're space Jews. Spajoos. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm glad or surprised I never made that connection. Well, I mean, I've been thinking about it since, you know, the last episode. Fair enough. So Jordy just went to engineering, did the engineering stuff, and came back up and is now going to fly the ship. They should really promote him if they're going to give him that much to do. Why did it take them this long to hail the ship? I mean... I guess they were all born yesterday, man. That's what I'm saying. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... I read a book once. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ah, God. <laughs> that hurts so bad. Three significant figures. That's that's the point here. Point right? three hundred millisecond. See now the captain has to tell him how to freaking run the console. Also, can they even go to warp backwards? She's still pooping. <laughs> 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 Looked like a good one. Yep. Counselor's log. Very brown. Can we report that? Oh, there we go. They they're stealing our data. I'm not gonna stop them, but Don't try and stop him. Born yeah. yesterday. It it that's she just like called out everybody that should know <laughs> better. Yeah. Yeah. A freaking counselor. Mm hmm. Who's the best tactician on the ship? The psychologist. <laughs> uh. and beat him up. I mean, you know, what type of person would fire on like another ship and? 
you know. All they've done is take all of our secrets I mean, and shoot at us. Yeah. We shouldn't be hasty. This is after stealing some sort of technological thing that we need to get back because we can't replicate another. All they've done is taken this really valuable thing we need and we can't duplicate and then shoot at us and then steal all of our secrets. We, we shouldn't get hostile. Let's have a meeting about it. I love you, Captain. Uh, what? What? Huh? He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what the captain is doing. I, I don't... What? You must detonate every photon torpedo on the ship. Never mind, do it now. Um, ba -ba. Yeah. I just wanted to. I imagine he'd like walked into his ready room, said, and left this log. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mental log. He's making a mental log to do a physical log later. moving. Oh well, yeah, the front of the ship moves. It's stretching. They're becoming excited. Because, you know, we better finish it in 63 seconds. That's right. Everything will be fine. I got this under control. I know what I'm doing. Yes, honor. That's what you're into. <laughs> yeah. The counselor was right. It 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 it's the planet. Like the counselor was right. I want to see what you look like. If it's against your custom, why do you have visual transmitters? Craig's just like, yeah. We want to see your females. <laughs> <laughs> I am terrified. <sighs> this is everybody's first look at the Ferengi. Yep. 
the Ferengi code. <laughs> Am I right? Guy <laughs> <laughs> talk. Hey, maybe Discovery will just reboot the way they look. Oh, God. Uh, how do people keep sneaking into the ready room or the conference room seriously no children on the bridge ever Riker literally just sent them out to the bridge so he was smelling it to see where the kids had had it <laughs> so some sort of ancient device on a planet from a civilization that's long gone wonder if they'll ever reuse this plot An enemy ship, you know, stuck in the same thing where they blame each other and have a standoff. And he can totally not analyze the situation or just, you know, use super strength to get out of that. All of them were born yesterday, I swear to God. Ah, oh, rub some of the makeup off of his yeah. robot finger. You know, it would be really nice if they had some kind of, like, physical prop as, like, a throwaway subplot that was, like, an analogy for the actual solution to the situation they're in. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen one yet. So that means they need to blow up the Ferengi ship so that way one end is open and then they can escape. That Exactly. Or, you know... Use your sensors when you come up to a strange thing for the first time. I don't know. Could be that. Uh. Those guys. You know how it's really easy to learn about people? From their corpses. Yeah, let's not talk. Say, hey, we're all screwed. Let's work together. I mean, power beyond imagination. Any sufficiently advanced technology appears to the untrained as magic. Yes. Whoever was the director was really like camera shots of data in this episode. They're like we're all up on him all the time. Does Troy ever stand up? She did earlier when she was right. Man, why did they go with the extreme close-up? Did they not finish the wardrobe yet? Yeah, I wonder if it has anything to do with his large ears. <laughs> Genius android. Sees a thing with giant ears. Born yesterday.
game Atari 4. Mm-hmm. Yes, they can. We've never heard of that. Yeah. Show us this the swap. Ah, nice yeah. close up on just the mouth. <laughs> Yeah. His fake teeth are whiter than his real teeth. Not that I have any room to talk, but you know. Close up. Extreme close up. <laughs> oh, he's still on the screen. Oh, that's right. Oh, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was broadcasting from a gymnasium, but with the camera like mounted to his head. Damon Tar. <clears throat> can you sp can you spare Worf? <laughs> yeah, screw him, man. I don't care. We need somebody wearing red to get their ass kicked. <laughs> That's right. Can't beat up the blind guy. That wouldn't be fair. How many times does Worf like get his ass kicked in this? A lot. So they heard the Ferengi are sending three, so they send five. That, yep. That's not threatening at all. Hey, it's the crystals from StarCraft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you must have struck the visual pilot. They look totally real. This is another scene they shot in a CinemaScope so they could pan across here because they have to do it on blue screen. Marco! Really? No polo? Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody out there? Quit climbing on What are you doing? You don't know, that might be alive. It might attack you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But they haven't worked out all the kinks in the transporter yet. I think Data was trying to work out some kinks right then, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I am fully functional. So smooth. So much dry ice. God, please let him be around here somewhere. I don't want to talk to the robot for another two hours. What? Oh, he's dead. 
<laughs> no. Oh. We can't tell. Your eyes are covered up. You... He's also a zombie. Uh, remember the guys on the view screen? That's them. Oh, yeah, they have, like, these are really cool weapons, actually. I like these. Like, I wish that I wish they kept using those. I like those. What was the action figures um, Quark had? That who had? Quark. I don't remember. He had like Ferengi action figures. Oh, wow. And they had the energy whips. See, those are like the best weapons. Those are like the most creative. So awesome. Let me get this straight. They're freezing, right? Uh huh. So they go to some room that's on the outer hall. Uh huh. <laughs> Good thing, you know, so cold they can see their breath. Yeah. I like that kind of gold braid thing she had going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, if it was that cold, it'd be more obvious, especially on Troy. That's a good point. Maybe that's when the third breast grows out. Instead of, you know... I'm, I'm going to stop there. Hey, they found Worf. Oh, hey. Yeah, he's in this episode, like every other episode. Yeah. Huh? Ah. Ah. And that'll help. Come on. Uh oh. Definitely the data. Definitely not a stun actor. Oh, no. <laughs> the Worf. Come on, Worf. the biggest word Worf's ever said. So wait, that means, you know, Ferengi are stronger than humans? Yeah. And Klingons, apparently. Well, except it gets retconned later, but... Tasha, tap in. Maybe these guys are like the elite military, you know, super mega Navy SEALs guys. Can I kill them, Riker? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't take them to, like, the inside of the ship, where it'll take longer for the heat to disperse. How about the battle bridge? That's, like, the only logically designed place. Or sick bay? That's right in the middle of everything. Dying slowly. But slightly faster than everybody else. I mean, roughly how many people are on the Enterprise? About a thousand. One thousand, sixteen. Roughly. Yeah, we already solved that in the last episode.
<laughs> uh oh. Mm. Oh, the wacky, crazy firing beam. Okay. Uh. It's it's excited. Ah, uh, fully erect. <laughs> Patterns of force. Point three hundred force. Yeah. A power accumulator. That's the technical turn. This bridge. It's a bridge. Obvious, oh my god. We we missed this the entire time we've been here. Born yesterday. All of them. Finest crew in Starfleet. Ah! Be you angels? And we said, nay, we are but men. Go for it, Worf. Portal 6-3. Do you have cake? Uh, I mean, not really. We just want to leave. I mean, the entire empire? Barstool. The age of Barstool. I mean, there's only three humans there. That's true. I, I dig the pink context. Yeah, the white man's burden lives on in the Federation. I uh. Ah, valuable, worthless gold. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe gold just lost all its value in the next like five years after this. Ah. <laughs> he's, he's so intimidating. <laughs> he had to bust a move right there. <laughs> oh, they're gonna have a dance off. You got served. I just imagine the portal guys like I've just kind of zoned out for the last five minutes. Well, and the audience should, too, because we already had this conversation three episodes ago in the pilot, four episodes yeah. ago. Go for it, Worf. <laughs> Yeah. It's not sped up at all. Nope. Ow, my ear. That would hurt a lot more for the Ferengi. It would. Thoughts about your security officer. <laughs> Thoughts about your psychologist. And your doctor. That girl from engineering. Many more women that, you know, I have no idea where they work. Hey, just in time for us to freeze to death. It's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's a shame they don't have any like overcoats or hats or anything. Oh, my liver. Why put a coat on? Oh, man. I feel like this is the hangover Star Trek. What's she doing on the bridge? Looks like she needs a cigarette. Well, they had to get that out of the way before they died. Yep. I I mean, should I mark that on the list? It looks like it was a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Will. Uh So is this portal guy like program? I don't know. Or is he an original series style, you know, just enigmatic immortal being? Or is he just, you know, like literally the last person from the Takan Empire who's been asleep here in some sort of cryostasis thing and he wakes up every now and then whenever a starship, you know, passes by. That's what it is. He's God. Forever sleep. My Yoda sucks these days. He did say, you know, 
fear is the enemy leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate, hate leads, leads to, to suffering. suffering. But can't anger lead to hate? And can't suffering lead to fear? What if fear leads to hate? But fear also, couldn't fear lead to suffering? I mean, suffering could lead to anger. I mean, he needed something profound to say right then. That's just what you know came out. <laughs> uh, everybody has a stupid finger traps. And they're all stuck. They're all... <sighs> Do I need to even say it? Best crew in Starfleet. Flagship of the Federation. The Academy's finest. The best humanity has to offer. I want to imagine, you know, they send the Fergie a box of these finger traps, right? Yeah. I want to imagine the Fergie crash into the planet because they can't fly their ship. I want to believe Worf is standing back there with his hands behind his back tied together because he can't get out and he just wasn't <laughs> he doesn't want to show everybody. <laughs> well, we we made it. We made it. That wasn't nearly as painful as the last three episodes. That was by far the best, I think, so far. Uh. So it just goes to show sometimes, you know, I, there, I don't know, there's what, there's a moral to this, right? Yeah, um, when you have a problem, don't kill each other. Yeah. When you have a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Hey, I have a question. Check out the hook. Did they ever actually retrieve the T9 energy converter or did they just forget about it and leave? Nah, I don't yeah, know. They, they beamed yeah. it back aboard there and then they were yeah. return, you know, the finger traps. So. I, I literally think they just forgot about it and left. I want like eight episodes later, I want there to be a scene with the captain and Riker walking around and the captain just snaps his fingers like, you know what we forgot? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Riker's like, don't worry, I won't tell anybody, sir. Splendid number one. Yep, till next time. Till next time. We'll go where no one's gone before. Oh, will we ever? And damn fast at that. Oh, boy. All right. This is us signing off, I suppose, because I don't remember what I say at the end. Take it easy. Engage. No, disengage. We're, we're done. Oh. Make it so? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Later, guys.